In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a Sears Telegame Super Pong system that I recently picked up. And as usual, we're gonna be upgrading that RF output to a standard composite video. The Telegame Super Pong console was one of many versions of the Atari set-top consoles of the mid-1970s. It included four built-in games, dual controllers, and a built-in speaker for sound. The similar consoles of the times were known as single-chip Pong systems and were all built around the same chip architecture. The main difference between those versions and my version, however, is the inclusion of integrated color graphics. While the Pong systems were a big hit in the holiday season of 1976, they aren't all that common to find these days. This specific console I actually picked up at a thrift shop for around $20. It was a gamble, but it worked out in my favor because it booted right up and the controllers and games worked properly. Since it was all good, I decided to pop it open, have a look around, and then finally put that aging RF output to rest and upgrade it to a composite video. Since audio was being fed to internal speaker that worked well, I decided to just focus in on video output. In order to start this project, I actually began with a similar circuit that I had used in an Atari 2600 to accomplish the same goal. It did, however, take some trial and error to narrow down the capacitors and resistors that I would need. I started first by mocking up my circuit, soldering everything into place, and then finally connecting my input and output lines. For the circuit, we used a 3904 transistor to take raw video signal and output an amplified composite signal to the RCA jack. First up for wiring the 3904 was finding proper voltage in to run it. After testing around the board, I found that the best place was off the through holes of the R20 resistor. Next was finding the pin that we could pull raw video signal for our circuit. This can be accomplished a couple different ways, but the easiest way is to power up the circuit, prod each pin until a video signal is being passed to a composite video monitor. After testing, I found that pin six on the AMI chip was the one that we needed. All that was left to do was to solder the lines into place and power up the game for final tweaking. Super Pong itself has a few dials, but only one that pertains to what we need. After adjusting the dial, video is now stable and we can move on to installing the RCA jack. If you've seen my Sega Genesis S video install, this is gonna look familiar. First we measure, and then we measure again. Next we start small and work our way up to the proper size drill for the RCA jack. Once the size is perfect, we can now use hot glue to permanently attach the jack to the shell and reassemble carefully. The final step is cleaning this thing up. Boy, does this thing look a thousand times better. This system was definitely worth the $20 investment, and by composite modding it properly, we extended its life significantly. If you're looking to composite mod this or any other RF-only consoles, you can find me at dbgamerepair.com or in my office at Raven Retro Games in Colorado Springs. Keep checking back on my channel for more mods and repairs, and remember, a like and subscribe are always appreciated. Thanks again for your support, and we will catch you guys later.